Hello, this is daily coding problem numero uno, or daily coding problem number one for those that don't speak El French. And it is um, me speaking that has had a little bit too much coffee. I just tried to record this a minute ago and I hadn't had enough coffee, so I had to pause, regroup, run through this one time, and then I thought, oh, daily coding problem, easy. I'll I should just be able to do a live code on that without ever even seeing the problem and like this in maybe a year or two. And then I started to work on it and I was like, uh, I don't remember. But anyway, it is an easy one, but it can be a head scratcher. So don't feel too bad. There, if you ever think you're a bad programmer, there's always me. Who's worse? Okay, so it says for uh, given a list of numbers and a number k, return whether any two numbers from the list add up to k. So here's for example, given 10, 15, 3, and 7, and k of 17, return true since 10 plus 7 is in fact 17. That would be the first and the last number in that list to in fact equal 17. So let's reread our problem statement one more time. Given a list of numbers, so one single list of numbers and a number k, return whether any two, so that's the key point right there is two, not like any variation. Excuse me, now I'm burping up the coffee. My apologies. Uh, numbers from the list add up to k. So that was something the first time through I didn't notice either. So I was going to add up all combinations of all numbers and whatnot but that's unnecessary for this problem. And bonus, can you do this in one pass? Okay, that's enough of that. So the first way I'm gonna do it is the non-recursive way, and then I'll do it the recursive way. So what we'll want to do first of all is get our sample input, always good input to start with. Copy that over and clean it up a bit. So we'll push this down here somewhere and we'll say sum in list to uh, see if the sum is in the list. Sum k is in this list. So we're passing in this list. This is Python of course. k equals 17 and then we'll want to print that result so I'll wrap it in a print statement or print uh, call statement whatever same thing I guess uh, and then we'll define this actual function sum in list and it needs to take a list of numbers and a k value and just in case you don't know in Python the colon is kind of like an opening brace or a block statement and then the indention decides where the block statements at so this four spaces over typically is uh, the, the indention just has to stay consistent, four spaces over, and then once you dedent or deindent, then you uh, you are effectively, you have closed that brace effectively. So there are no braces, no tacky braces everywhere, and you don't end up with that hanging, dangling, closing braces thing or anything like that. So it's kind of handy. All right. So what we're going to do is the non-iterative way first, and that would be or the iterative way first, I should say, the non-recursive way first. And what we'll do is we'll say for each, uh, for x in numbers, actually I'm gonna enumerate this, I think. Is that the best way to do it? Sometimes, okay, so in Python you can do enumerate, and then what that will do is that will give you an index value and the actual element value, and you can come over here and say like, this would be like an index value, like an i, you could just say, and then this would be like value or item or something like that. But that's not available in every language and it can get kind of confusing too because sometimes I'll end up playing with the index value instead of the item value which I did last time I just tried this a little short bit ago so I'm gonna say in the I'll just say for X in numbers 
which is like for each and numbers for each number or we'll even say yeah whatever x y is the easiest way to go probably i'm overthinking it for x in numbers and then for y in numbers and then what we're going to do here a little python trick to say if we get the second index value and on which would of course it's zeros based so zero would be the first index so one and on right there so that would effectively give us the first list would have 10 15 3 and 7 and then the next list of numbers would have 15 3 and 7 so maybe that makes sense there's ways to do that in other languages too it just might be a little bit more crafty because python's very efficient when wheeling and dealing with lists excuse me okay so then we're just going to say if uh x plus y and of course the other way also if you don't have like a for each style statement um or you prefer not to use one you could just of course use indexes and say you know for i in numbers for j in this you know subset list then say for numbers index i plus you know numbers whatever index all right, so if x plus y compares to 17, oh, we don't want to hard code that. I, another thing I always do by accident. So if those compare, then go ahead and print it, and I'll just say um, x plus y. Not a good idea to mix IO with computations normally, but this is just one a one-off simple example, so. No big deal. Equals uh, x plus y. And then we want to return true. Otherwise, we've gone through the whole list of numbers. And, you know, effectively, the first time we go through, this will be 10. x will be 10. And then the next, the y will be 15 the first time through this list. So it will be 10 plus 15. That won't be right. Then it will come back up to this inner loop and it will be 10 plus 3, that won't be right. It will come back up and it will be 10 plus 7 and it will be right. So that will be good. Okay, and then otherwise, if we make it through both those lists, skip a line to show the separation between those loops and conditionals and all that. And now we're effectively rolled out of that because like, let's say we didn't find the number in that list, then we need to return, return, return false. Just like that. Okay, let's try it out. See what errors and typos I did. Oh, it worked. Okay. So that looks right. But we don't know for sure. We need to give it a few test inputs. It's just working against the stock one. So let's switch the 10 and the 3 here. Put the 10 there and put the 3 over here. I guess I'm doing it like a computer word. Okay. F5 again. All right, both of them came out true, which is good. They're the same thing. It's just a little bit swapping the numbers around. And then let's try a different sort of a list here. Like that. And so 8 and 9 should add up to 17. They're the two biggest values added together. So if something else adds up before then, then we know we're compounding, compiling multiple val more than two values. Nope, went all the way to eight and nine. Okay, and let's grab that one, bring it down one, and let's change this to 18 and make sure we actually have a false statement. Run that. Ooh, nine plus nine equals 18, that returned true. So what did I do wrong here? If y, oh, I passed in 18 as the k value. Wait. Okay, it added 9 plus 9, huh? Okay. Huh. I guess 9 plus 9 shouldn't have happened. When I ran through this earlier, I guess I didn't test that case. I actually programmed this iterative version a little bit differently. I used index values and stuff. So for y in that, we need to do x in numbers and then do the same thing but opposite with the split here. We'll say everything from the beginning up to 
the length of numbers. Minus, so the length of numbers, it would be up to but not including, and then we want to uh, subtract even one off of that. I'm pretty sure that's the way that, or you know what? The simplest way in Python would be just negative two. So negative one would be that nine or the seven in the first list, and then negative two would effectively be back two. That's the more efficient way in Python, or in another language, of course, you do for the length of it. All right, let's run that and see. Ooh, not working. What's the problem here? So the first one worked, but the last ones didn't. Up to but not including, so up to but not including the last one. That's I was off by one. Okay. There we go. Now the first three are true and the last one is false. And that concludes the iterative version. Now let's try the, uh, I'll go ahead and just make a new function and call it sum in list recursive. I don't like that name. I don't even like sum in list. We'll just call it add each and then effectively the same signature and just have to copy all these and I'll comment those out so they don't run anymore and then I'll control V these ones and you know what I'll just get rid of this let me control Z back a hundred million times all right I'm gonna get rid of this one Control X and I'll come way down here and I'll just paste it and then I'll do this little ghetto thing here and uh, comment it out so it's no big deal even though it wouldn't even matter down there and then we'll do then we can use the same name if we wanted sum in list that'll take numbers and a k value all right now this is going to be the recursive version where it just calls itself instead of creating multiple nested for loops and whatnot. So what we're going to do here is a lot of times you'll put a terminating case first, but in this case it seems better not to. So just thinking about it logically, it's like we want to, uh, usually with a recursive answer, you're wanting to whittle down a problem, like if you can chop it down. So we're kind of doing like 10 plus 15 plus 3 plus 7. Then we're going to do 15 plus 3 plus 7. Then we're going to do 3 plus 7, like that. So if you notice that it's a whittling away at the problem, the list is getting, the effective list is getting smaller because the second time through, we don't use the 10. So it's a smaller list and then a smaller list. And then finally, we unwind out of that, so to speak. So what we're going to do is say, I don't remember if I used a for loop right here or not. Need another sip of coffee. All right. So we do need to test everything in the list. So we'll say for, um, and we're gonna get that first number off the list. So we'll do for number in numbers and then since we're taking that first number off we'll do it like that kind of like in the last one where we're just we're going to use that zero number zero index and so we want numbers index one and beyond to the end of the list and then we'll say if numbers oops numbers zero which will be that 10 initially plus n which will be 15 initially compares to the k value then we want to we'll go ahead and print it so we can see what's going on it's not necessary but we'll just do it for fun um, 
numbers zero and Oop. all right and then we'll return true so we're going through there and basically if those numbers we can sort of like a short circuit evaluation as soon as we find something that equals that past 10k value then we just return true and that will uh, effectively return true out of this function call right so that's all good and dandy but what about when we get down to our last one here then well not only our last one that's only going to iterate through so before we get to the last one even the uh, the second one for example it's not going to it's going to add three against all these and nothing's going to come up true so then we need to whittle down the list so and what we'll do is the recursive call and we'll say what we normally do is just call our thing again sum in list and then we'll give it numbers and then that numbers is going to be the we're effectively chopping off that first value and returning the rest of the list right and then we'll pass on that same k just to keep everything consistent and we don't want that to run no matter what um because what about when we're done like sort of a terminating situation where we're done iterating through the list it's just going to keep on even when numbers is zero values or one value or whatever it's still going to try and run and get weird and probably get an error better get an error so we need to test if uh if numbers let me get this out of the way so it's not as confusing looking if numbers if the length of numbers i'm sorry the length of numbers is greater than one so if we have two numbers in that list then we can send it through and it will chop off that first number effectively as number zero and then the second number and any numbers beyond will become part of this end loop so really it wouldn't even need to loop but it will and that keeps it simple and effective there okay and then otherwise if we go through all of that and we want to return that So then if we go through on this next one, it will eventually keep calling itself, and then it will get to uh, 10 plus 7, and that will um, return true right here. So this will return true, and it will come back to here, and it will return true. So in both situations, we have it to where it will either return true in the first pass, or it will drill in and return true in the second or further pass. And if it doesn't return true in any of those passes, otherwise, return false. Because if it goes through all that stuff and it hasn't returned true, then we need to return a false value because it obviously isn't found. And the reason we do it like this is because, uh, I mean, I really don't think I even need that else statement there. I'll just put it there for clarity, though. Um, I think some programming languages won't even let you do that, so let's... Do it like that and see how that works. So, yeah, basically, like these will both terminate the, uh, you know, bounce out of the function. So it will never even hit this false statement if it ever hits a true condition right there. And if it makes it down this far, of course, it's false. All right, F5. There we go. Everything looks right there. About 10 plus 7, 17, true, 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 and false. So there is the recursive version of it. And you can see it just keeps calling itself and it keeps whittling that list down one and it passes in that same K value to compare right there. And then this version, I'll, uh, I guess let's see if I can fit it in the same screen up here. Almost. If I don't follow Pep8 here, there we go. And do Alt 4 on that. So there's the two different versions. This, of course, was the iterative version, and this was the recursive version. And 
almost always the iterate version, especially in like a non-optimized functional, like a non-functional language or a language that doesn't offer tail call optimization, then the iterative version is going to be faster. And even if it offers tail call optimization, um, in that situation, you the very last thing that happens is it has to call that. That has to be the very last thing in the function is that it is the call to the function. So you would have to rewrite this to where it would be like check for this false scenario before like if numbers length is greater than zero or excuse me greater than one you'd have to probably just say if length of numbers is uh, less than two then return false because you're at a false scenario at that point and then you could say else return this and then that way this sum in list call would be the very last thing I'll even just go ahead and flip that over just to illustrate it so um, or I could do it by reusing this statement right here if that is less than two v else otherwise that okay so that would be a proper tail call optimiz optimizable right there and I, I want to say that like truly 100% pure functional languages, I don't don't quote me on it, but you might not even have to do the tail call to get the optimization. They might already just be that smart. They should be. But let's see what happens if we try and run it. Because technically Python's a top down, left to right parsed language. So it should read in this definition, then execute these commands then read this one in to override it. So we shouldn't get an error even though we have two of these that are the same name. So, and it should know to just by that protocol to run this one first. And it did. Okay, so, and we can see all the answers came out the same still. And really you don't wanna do, this is almost like more of a debug statement. You don't wanna do your, um, I'll just totally get rid of it. That's how you'd want to do that in real life. And then then I can kind of pep eight this back out and do the double spaces there. Okay. So then we just get true, 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 false. And then just to finish it off here, I'm going to do true. Oops, what's going on there? True. True, false, all right. So those are test case scenarios there. One thing, there's doc testing too. I don't want to get into that. That's Python specific. But yeah, there it is. Once again, your recursive answer and your iterative answer for daily coding problem number one. Find, what was it? Given a list of numbers and a number k, return whether any two numbers in that list add up to k. Thanks a lot.